Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? It's Superfiend here, and welcome back to another episode of our Total War Warhammer 2 Techless, Techless Campaign. We are sieging the settlement, Sentinels of Zeti. I think this is the last force or the last settlement of this faction, so if we uh, win this battle and occupy it, this faction will be destroyed, and we'll also have completed the first settlement outside of our starting province, or we'll, we'll have completed the first province outside of our starting province. Now, I'm pretty sure that we can do this. This will be the first uh, offensive siege that I have played in Total War Warhammer 2. Uh, we did have a defensive siege earlier in the campaign, so I know a little bit about the battle maps and the sieges, but really not much. So what do we have? We have spearmen and archers. It's kind of been our bread and butter since the beginning of the campaign. And they have Sora's spears and warriors with the shields, mace infantry, and they have some skinks that have cudgels. And they're led by a level two, what is this, mace infantry. It's just a melee hero, melee lord. And we did already siege for one turn, so we may have a battering ram or a tower. I can't remember what we were building at the end of last episode. So we're gonna jump in here. Oh, I guess we could we could look at the battlefield. Let's see what the map looks like. Whoop de doo. <laughs> okay, let's fight it. Let's see how we do. Um, and we did perform a right that gets us some sort of um, consumable attack. It gets used two uses and it damages walls, and it allows you to siege a settlement um, without siege equipment. So maybe we won't have any rams or anything. Yeah, we okay. So here's the uh, here's the ability. Cannot target if not climbing, man, and equipment or on a plan. powerful explosion affects city walls and siege equipment. Siege battles may be launched instantly. So does this like does it blow up the walls or the gate? I I have no idea exactly how this thing works. Okay, we do have one battering ram. And let's see, where's the capture point? So this is where we have to get in. So let's put our battering ram on this side, okay? And then we'll deploy the majority of our forces over here. And actually, if we set up outside of here, I'm pretty sure this is outside the uh, firing arc of the towers. So this is actually, um, maybe this is a good place to deploy. I don't actually know um, how wide are these firing arcs and it doesn't really show us either, does it? Okay. Okay, and then where's Teclas here? We'll set him up. He's got a ward save, so we can kind of place him closer to the AI or to the enemy than everything else. Now, these guys are probably going to get wiped out. I'm not imagining that they're going to survive this battle. Okay, and what's the cooldown? Okay, everywhere that I'm trying to, to place and target this, it says no. The target. Enemy. Okay. Okay, so I guess we can target the guys that are on top of the walls. I guess. Okay, but we're not going to... Um... Oh, this is interesting. Let's see. Okay, I'm, I'm accustomed to Warhammer 1, where the AI really splits up its forces, and I was expecting these guys to be taking heavier missile fire up here, so... Okay, strategically, we're in a good spot right now. And... Nice bold lines on the uh, firing arcs here. Thank you, Creative Assembly, for making those nice and visible. Okay, and let's just um, cruise these guys up. I don't think the defenders have any um, anything worthwhile in the form of missile weapons. We should be able to take the settlement, I think, then, with very few casualties. So we cannot target these people on the ground with this, okay? But we can target the ones that are up top. And 
Is this a section of wall that can be broken? It looks like it is because it says 0%. So if we target them, you know, what happens? I, I don't know yet. Maybe we won't even need to use it. I don't know. Okay, so we can't cast the Vortex on a wall. We can cast the Flock of Doom. Okay. And really, if we were to use this, we'd want to maneuver Techless, like, over here and try to shoot it down the, um, down these guys lengthwise. Can we cast this on top? Kind of looks like we can, doesn't it? Oh, and I changed the options, uh, the game options, so that uh, we default walk. That's why these guys are moving so slow. And really quick, brightness. Okay, so this is the same as outside the game. campaign. I want to look at the campaign settings when we get back on the uh, campaign map. I've kind of been neglecting to do that. All right, so very interesting. These guys, they made it all the way to the gate completely unmolested. Um, not very smart on the part of the AI to let them do that. We'll let these guys run. Apparently, these guys are still moving, even though they're just uh, sitting still. Odd. All right, let's see. Where's the firing arc? So we want to get, like, right here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. We're going to set up outside here. The enemy gates are destroyed. Okay, but don't go inside. We don't want you to go inside. Just, you know, be patient. We don't want them to go inside. And let's see. They come forth from the bubbling pits. Okay, so everybody's just outside the firing arc. Very, uh, very nice that there's a deployment area <laughs> outside the firing arcs that we can go and sit steady. It actually, you know what else would be cool too? Um, Okay, let's just admire the map real quick. Very nice battle maps, although much a very small space for the size of um, the surrounding area, but that's okay. Uh, what would be cool is if, like, is if Creative Assembly moved these types of elements more into the terrain here, and let's say that these walls were fully manned and we were taking tower fire. It'd be cool if this was, like, moved in here and you could actually take cover and things like this. Um, that would kind of help. That would just make things feel a little bit more strategic but then of course they got to make it so that the ai doesn't sit there and waste all of its ammo firing at them okay who's shooting us here this one tower is shooting us okay so that was not the best spot to stand to stand right okay let's uh let's just see what happens when we turn on some missile fire here right let's see how quickly we melt these guys uh, shields are carried in the left hand, so if Warhammer 2 works the same way as earlier Warhammer games, they have a higher chance to block um, from missile fire from the left hand side, and we're firing from their right hand side. And actually, they're choosing to target the Skink Cohort, which is facing uh, the completely wrong direction. Now, I wish I knew what this little green aura was that's on them, but I can't tell. We want to drop a flock of doom or a vortex on these guys. We could throw a vortex back here. Actually, let's drop our nets. And then we'll drop a vortex. We'll do this thing. And now let's drop this up here on these walls. Let's just see what this does. Oh, wow, 50% damage to the wall, zero to the gate. 
Did it damage the wall next door? It did not. It damaged all of this up here. Okay. Okay, this unit here, this skink cohort on the ground, took a bit of damage, and so is this one up here from the missile fire. What is making that, like, rattling sound? Is it this electricity? I think it's this electricity that's doing that. Strange noise. Let's see. Okay, let's cruise down. Teclas can attack the gate. Can Spearmen attack the gate? Everything can attack the gate, so, like... Why wouldn't you be able to start a siege straight away without siege equipment if you can attack the gate with regular infantry? Kind of seems like an arbitrary restriction, right? Okay, now these guys are coming off the wall. That's good. Not really getting as much missile fire as I'd like, so let's see. I think we'll get more missile fire if we just line up like this. Being careful to avoid the firing arc. Okay. Then we got Teclas over here. Okay. Now, uh, in my Throg Let's Play, yeah, see, there we are. We're getting a lot more missile fire. In my Throg Let's Play, when you stand on the side here and angle this down this way, it kind of doesn't. Um, it, it kind of has a stupid movement pattern. Like it pops in and then it shoots off in weird directions. So like, is that going to happen when I do this? I hope not. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Which way is it going to go? Okay, that was better. It really didn't do that much damage though. And Teclas is now standing under this tower. So he's going to take fire. And let's see. We could, we could hit these guys up here with this thing again. These guys are shaken, but they're not going to run away yet. Yes. Alright, let's just speed it up. The smart thing to do is to uh, run through as much of our missiles as we can. Actually, stop firing. Okay, we want to wait for these guys to take the place on the walls. Because this unit is broken but not shattered, so they will come back. So we want to do our damage up here to these guys. A unit has used all of its ammunition. Okay. A couple more units have used all their ammunition. We'll move them out. Okay, we got 30 wins of magic, so let's uh, drop this stuff again. We're not going to use the net this time. I don't think that really made a big difference. We'll drop the Flock of Doom. So we're doing okay damage to these guys. Actually, we, we took a... Whoa! The door's open. Are they going to come out and attack? Don't hurt Teclas. He's not very strong. Okay, we'll get this guy's over here. And now, let's see. The firing arc. So we'll move up with those units. And what we really want is we want like stronger enemies here on the walls. Okay, let's see, let's see how this does. It did a little bit of damage, not very much.
Do we want to drop this vortex back here on these guys? Ah, uh, probably not. And let's see. Okay, we're just going to run through as much of our magic as possible with Teclas here. And let's now use this ability on the spears with shields that are up on the wall. Oh, okay, we brought the wall down. That did bring it down. I didn't think it was going to. All right, so now we got we to gotta weigh in. So it did 50% damage over here and 0% over here, but one strike over here did break the wall. So apparently this is strong enough to crush the walls um, immediately on the first go. Guess that's good to know, right? Oh, okay. Here, here we go. Um, let's stop firing. Are these guys really? <laughs> oh my God! Is this gonna work? Are we just gonna be able to like? There we go. <laughs> Holy moly! There's like. Okay, and then let's uh. Let's see. If we turn on missile fire at these guys, are they gonna fire at the these guys here? No, fire it! Fire at these guys! Oh wow! Look at this. They're actually coming out. Okay. Oh, and we are targeting them correctly. I was worried that we wouldn't be able to. Okay. Oh, they're uh, they're out of control. They can't help themselves. Cool. Keep firing. Yeah, okay, let's get up here with Teclas. Now, they got Saurus. Now, what can we do when we get inside the settlement here? Okay. And then let's not forget, we still got these guys. The AI is probably going to stay on those walls for as long as we keep those spearmen parked over there. All right, do we want to come in with some of our units now, or do we want to wait a little bit longer? Um, let's stop firing. Okay, maybe we want to take... Um, you didn't have I thought I said stop firing. Stop firing. Stop! Okay. We want these guys to run. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we want some... Um, if we bring some archers over here, are they going to be able to fire over the walls okay? And are they going to take too much fire from these towers? There's nobody manning this tower now. And we're barely in the firing arc of this thing. So I think we'll be good. Give it a shot. Okay. Back up to 30 wins of magic. Oh, these guys are out of control. And apparently this tower is manned again. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it hits the people above and below. Good to know. Okay, this unit's broken again. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can cruise through this hole in the wall and get ourselves a nice uh, strategic position. And then we'll see if we can get these guys in the back here. 
Nobody, nobody's taken fire. Let's drop this over here on this side. Okay, so what's it going to take for these guys to decide that the spearmen over here are a bigger threat than the guys that are standing on the other side of the wall, huh? Maybe we got to drop the vortex. Okay, they decided they didn't like us. Here they come. Okay, let's go uh, bang on the doors. See what happens. These guys should actually be able to hold their own for quite a while. Because we've got this uh, regeneration. So let's boost up their physical resistance for a while. And let's see. Now these guys are losing the combat to the Source Warriors, huh? And we're going to be through the gate soon. Okay, so they are going to go that way. And then let's get these guys in here. Okay, and they're going to go through the hole, which is what we want. Uh, where's Teclas? Let's, uh, let's walk Teclas back here so that we can pop the Helm of Discord. Okay, now here comes this guy. These guys are still losing their combat. Okay, so now they're debuffed. What's it cost to overcast this real quick? 20. Wow, that's expensive. Okay, uh, resume battle. We'll go ahead and pop this on these guys. Are they through? They are through. Okay, now we're, we're basically running out of magic here. Okay, then now we need to get these guys in here quickly. We are attacked in the flank by these guys, and that's obviously bad. And they got... Put Jokador. I don't even know how you say that. I can't even begin to guess how that's pronounced. Okay, then let's um. Okay, let's turn these guys around to fight them. So now we got these Saurus warriors. We're attacking them kind of on both sides. They're all bunched up in here. And let's see. Can we? No, no, no. Come on. I want you guys to. Fill in the gap here. There we go. There we go. And these guys with the shields up here should be spawned into action. Now these guys all have ammo that they could be using, but I don't quite want to use it right now. Let's see. Oh, these guys are taking missile fire from the tower, I guess. We can run these guys in and maybe get them in the combat a little bit. Uh-oh. Let's drop a flock of doom. Okay, now I have a feeling that Teclas is not going to win combat against this guy. So we got to keep an eye on him. 
These guys should be firing. So we'll be doing some uh, good damage to these guys up here, I think. Although they do have shields. Okay, these guys are fleeing. And these units are going to stay over here again for as long as that Spearman unit is just sitting there. Which is, which is a fair trade. It's fine with me. Alright, come on you guys, get in here. So we're going to send all these spearmen in. Or archers. Okay, Teclas is um, he's getting beat up. Now how do we look over here? Okay, these guys are dying. Victory's in our grasp. Your warriors are rallying. Lizard men are very durable. Like they are, they get uh, just as stuck in, I'd say, as the dwarves are. Lizard men are kind of hard to fight. Okay, these guys are now deciding to move over towards the capture point. And these guys are deciding they want to come attack us, huh? All right, let's see if we can uh, cruise up the, uh, the little alley here, the gutter. And how are we looking with Teclas? We'll go over there and pop our helmet to score it again. All right, let's climb the walls with these guys. That should give us a firing arc down into everybody. Okay, let's move Teclas right into the middle here. And debuff everything. Alright, let's see if we can get these guys uh, cruising more towards here. Come oh, on, get over there. Okay, we got these guys broken. Okay, and Teclas is still okay. He's not even in combat. These guys are wavering. These guys are coming off the wall. And this guy's just... He won't die. Come on, you slow pokes. Climb the walls faster. Taking forever. Okay, we're getting fire on these guys. Okay, we got them chased off. We're going to move around the, um, the back here with Teclas. Oh, look at them. They are, like, they are gunning it for Teclas. There we go. Man, we took a lot of casualties. Okay, how are we doing here? Now we're fighting with these guys. Broken. Okay, good. All right, we're finally making it into the capture point, and we finally won. Ooh. So, still tough battle. Uh, lizard men are very durable. They're like dwarves. They got a lot of similarities when you fight them to dwarves. Except instead of like really good artillery, they have big monsters. I guess that's kind of their the way they differ. 
ever victorious. All right, that took a long time, but Demolish we got it done. Everything. We're gonna no, we're not gonna demolish everything there. Uh, we're gonna occupy. Oh, okay. Look at this. Was personally involved in combat during battles. It's so nice to finally know like how these traits trigger. So by being personally involved in the combat, you get bold. If they get routed multiple times. Then they become fast, but they have poor leadership. That's kind of funny. Okay. Yay, we secured another province. Faction destroyed. Public order. Oh, we gained a follower. Public order plus four. Killed that guy. Good. So let's see here. What do we want? Okay, we are suffering some... Um, Skaven corruption. So our untainted is going down. Now, is untainted like what we want to have? I mean, why have a corruption value called untainted? Why just like have nothing? If that's like the way you want to go. I don't know. Um, we need growth and we need to build the settlement up. So let's go ahead and do the construction cost for now. And we're not going to repair anything until the next turn when we have our edict. Now, why did we recruit this person? We recruited this person because we were going to get a rebellion. And now the rebellion is going to attack here instead of here. So uh, we could save 400 upkeep per turn, almost 500, by letting this person go. I'm going to hang on to this person for one turn just in case the AI rebellion does go straight for the capital. I'm pretty sure... Pretty certain that it will, but I just I don't want to lose that minor settlement. So, oh, we can finally get Teclas a, a mount, which, um, which is good. Melee defense and speed, master of the order. Um. All characters. Now the flaming sword. Ooh. No, no, no. Can I just? Can I just go to the spell browser straight from here? Because what we're looking at right now is the upgraded version. And I want to see, like, just the non-upgraded version. All right, let's see what the encyclopedia says. No, I just, I want to just see the spell. Like, I just want to see the basic spell. Okay. I guess we got to do it in here. Fire. See, th I just want to see this from the skill tree, like the basic version of the spell. It's amazing how e either I'm brain dead or it's amazing how they could just like not show that to you. Um, it only lasts for 18 seconds. and But it does affect missile damage. See, like, am I crazy? How come, how come nowhere in here... Like, down, down below, it says Flaming Sword of Rune upgraded. Okay, great. Show me the other one, too. Like, just stack them on top of each other or something. Or make a little checkbox in here. I, I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm tempted to get the Flaming Sword because with if you cast the net on a group of enemies and then you cast this on your archers, 25% um, missile damage. It's an extra quarter. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit extra, right? It's a little bit extra. And then if we were to get this here uh, with the reload time reduction, they'll be they'll be shooting. They'll be like machine guns with magic flaming arrows, and that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Okay, and then there's these. Okay, you know what? I haven't even looked at these.
So it's a ward save, it's a hex around enemies map wide and it lasts 15 seconds oh my goodness and it's active if casting okay and this is armor piercing this affects allies in range across the map this affects flying enemies who cares <laughs> Five seconds of hit point replenishment while casting. Okay, for every for all allies on the map. Ooh. Increased speed while casting. Improved power recharge rate while casting. It lasts 25 seconds. Twenty-nine seconds of recharge. And this affects undead. Oh my goodness. These things here are powerful. Wow. You know, maybe I should be looking at his red line a little bit. Sorry, I, I, I haven't spent any time like really investigating what these things do. So, you know, this is your typical um, boost your boost your allies. Okay, this is pretty good. Um, missile damage, 12%. And it gives armor. Silver torrent. Not really concerned about the speed and the Dragon Prince Phoenix stuff. I don't really think we need this on Teclas either. Um, I w you know, okay, you know what? I'd like to get favorable wins in addition to the Bowmaster. And then you get Kindle Flame, 22% weakness to fire damage. And you get the Flaming Sword of Rune. And you you cast this on your archers and you, you net them in place. And okay. Um, so the question is, what do we want first? Let's go ahead and get the Shield of Safari for now. And while after casting. Or while casting, everybody on the map gets 11% damage resistant. So that's pretty good. Let's get that. And let's see here. What else? Damaged building. I don't care. Imminent rebellion. We don't care about that either. Okay. And this guy can move. Um, how come I can't right click on these guys and go attack them? Okay, let's... Oh, okay, he doesn't have the movement to get there. Okay, let's get back in the settlement. Oh, I see. I was confused. I This is his force march range. This was his regular range. We didn't have the movement to get there. That's fine. Okay, now over here. You know, it really is a waste to build these level 3 buildings in here. But before we go dismantling them, let's see how many level 5 buildings we need. Um... Or level four and five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are going to have to dismantle these in here eventually. But not this turn. Okay, uh, we're good. And we move shelled. Yeah, okay. All right, so we've got four turns of really bad... Um, upkeep per turn, and then we're going to be out of money. So let's see here. It's a Lizardmen Rebellion, and somebody damaged the walls at our settlement. Okay, the Dark Elves are running. We should be able to catch them if we want, and we have to worry about this Rebellion over here. Okay, the Spinous Sotek Dwarves, they kind of hate us, I think. That's not good.
Okay, so they damaged the walls. We're besieged. Fine. No big deal. Right? No big deal. This guy's got really poor uh, movement range. It is. It's really poor. Oh, they got a Terranoc chariot. Defenses will hold. Defenses will. I hope so. Okay. Um. I think we're gonna force march, like all the way up to here. So they got silver helms, and silver helms are what? They're shock cav, armored, anti-infantry. So they're they got better horse archer, better horsemen than we do, and they have an eagle, and they have sword masters of Hoeth. We've got a mountain of Northern Sea Guard. So the question is, uh, do we want to attack this here? We got a lot of spearmen. Boy, I don't know. Okay, let, let's hold off on doing anything there. We'll wait a couple turns. We need to get some public order going in this settlement. Our minus 11 public order per turn is really um, not good for us. Okay, let's move this person. How much movement does it take them to move up to here? Let's get her some experience real quick. We'll attack this army. Uh, we're going to auto-resolve this, and we're going to take the unit experience. Oh, he's still up. Okay, we'll attack him again. Again, we'll take the unit experience. We're going to go ahead and give her Route Marcher. Uh, let's see. We got the level 2 settlement in here. We're going to disband her. So now we're down to 3,700. Okay. So, let's see. Did we push towards these guys? These guys are down to one settlement. I bet you they would accept the peace treaty. Can we force a bunch of money out of them? We might be able to get a bunch of money out of them. And then we could maybe go attack these Skaven. Now let's look at these dwarves. Who are they at war with? Clan Skyre, which is like probably over here, right? No way. And we still can't get a trade agreement with them. Why not? Aren't we connected to them now? Let's see if we. Okay, look at this. The. Uh... All right, let's try. Uh... Yes, trade, please. Oh, you guys are pesky. No. Let's offer them a thousand. Let's see. We could always spend influence to get them to like us a little bit more. 76, 128. Okay, trade with these guys would, would be okay. Honor before glory. Um, I'm a little cautious about entering into diplomatic relations with AI factions. Orders. And the reason for that is the the diplomacy in Warhammer is basically a friend of my friend is my friend and an enemy of my friend is my enemy. So as soon as you start making diplomatic agreements, you start getting uh, penalties with other factions that don't like whoever you are... Um, 
entering into agreements with. Oh, wood elves, huh? Surprised to see some elves out here. Well, wood elves. Futile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing we could do Make your proposal. My is if we were to declare war on Clan Skyer. Let's go find Clan Skyer, right? Uh, let's make this bigger. They are strength rank uh, 19, so they are apparently stronger than this. They have six settlements. They are at war with quite a few factions. So if we declare war on them, we're going to gain favor with these dwarves, and that could be good for us. But I'm guessing that everything they control... Oops, didn't really want to close that. Everything they control is all this territory down here, which is really bad for us. I'm guessing. You know, this is this is not a good place for us to build. But at the same time, controlling that territory is better than controlling nothing. So where where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Defender of truth. Let's move shelled. This is always easy to decide. Making waves. Now oh, we got another little thing over here. What did we get? Campaign movement range. Yay. Now oh, we'll just cruise this way a little bit. Okay. Before the rightful lords of this land, and I'll hear your demands. Okay, what are we gonna do? Let's go back over here. And we have a hefty amount of influence, so we could go to intrigue at the court, and we could go to the last defenders, and we can buy 20 more influence from them. You know, let's go ahead, let's do that. Okay, and then let's also go to the Spine of Sotek Dwarves, which we're at minus 10, but it is improving. And let's, um, whoa, it doesn't reset. It costs, oh boy, this sucks. I was hoping it would reset to like 10. I, I was hoping that the increased cost was like per faction, but it's global. Well, then now I don't want to do it. Forget it. Unassigned skill points. Techless. Mm. Okay, we got lots of good stuff in here. Triggers when casting a spell replenishes hit points at combatants. Power recharge rate. Like these are these are kind of good. Increase the power reserves. Improved power recharge rate. 29 seconds. I mean we could cast more often. Those are kind of tempting, huh? Same thing with all this stuff. Winds of Power, Magic Reserve, 15. Oh, boy. Let's get the... Mm -hmm, let's get the Kindle Flame for now. And then next round, we'll get the Flaming Sword of Rune. And then we'll focus on things that allow us to cast more often. And that seems, uh, that seems like a good strategy. All right, we'll repair this, and we need growth or public order. Let's get the growth building. How many turns? Six. Six turns. I'm ready. And can we drop buildings? Would it be a good idea to drop some buildings in here? Like, if we were to dis, uh, destroy this and destroy the cavalry built, oh, we can't do anything with it right now. But if we were to destroy this building Order shall prevail. and destroy the Shrine of Assyrian, then what we could do is we could get two public order buildings. And that might be worth it. But then again, if we spend 2k over here, okay, let's see what we can do. 
Uh, before we're going to... Oh, no. We're, we're still missing the Elven Court. Gosh, darn it. We want to get in here and get some of this stuff, don't we? Don't we? We do. All sea regions made it visible to your faction. Ah! I want that. This, God, this is so much like civilization. Isn't isn't there like a... um? What are they called in civilization? The um, the monuments and, and things. The the special projects. The cultural project thingies that you build. And, and doesn't one of them, like, if you build it first, it, it reveals all the sea? I think it does. I do not fear the Druki. The campaign map is like, it has taken a lot of stuff from civilization. And that's good. That's actually, it makes the campaign map very interesting. Uh, maybe maybe for Warhammer 3, we'll see some some theft from uh, the Europa whatever series. I've never played those games, but they're supposed to have really good diplomacy. So let's see here. Uh, you know, we're just going to end the turn. Yeah, get in your boats and go away. Now, Clan Skyer is the Skaven that's near us, and it'll be nice if we don't have if we don't get war declared on us by them. That would be helpful. Okay, let's see. This is we're still stuck in this very first recruitment tree. So can we not walk across? How do we get up here? Okay. Um, let's go do Sheld first. Oops. Because Sheld may uh, give us some money. And no, it doesn't look like we're in reach of anything. Okay, so we got some stuff to go get. Uh, let's go back to Teclas. Let's see. Come on now. Not aggression. Behold the Phoenix Court in all its splendor. Certainly not. I just want to get a little bit of money from trade agreements. We're still improving with these guys. They're liking us more and more. Okay, come on now. Eventually, they're going to accept us, right? Um, yeah, because we also declared war against Clan Moors. Which, that could come back and bite us. Like, Clan Moors could... Clan Moors could decide that they really hate us and just, like, show up all of a sudden. Uh, because we declared war on them. So, that could actually bite us in the behind. You know, I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to bring Teclas back down this way to help with the rebellion. Okay, we're actually at plus two public order over here, but that's because we have Teclas um, garrison. It's going to be negative public order as soon as we take him out. Ah, minus six. Come on. Uh, we're going to turn taxes off in that province because we're not making a lot of money there anyways. It's too expensive to turn them off here. And this guy we're going to change into... Oh, what kind of stance? Leadership, melee defense. We're going to go ahead. We're going to encamp. Okay. All right. Can't build anything. We got a couple turns before we can upgrade this. Fine. A 
Opposing ritual started. Say your peace. We're not doing very good with the uh, with the rituals. We're gonna go take that island. I think we're gonna go take that island. All right, Teclas, how close can you get? Uh, let's go ahead. All right, let's um, let's move almost all the way up to here. Okay. Can you not get closer? Oh, good. So now, if we attack, does Teclas come on? Yeah, we get everybody. Okay. So we're probably going to fight this. That'll probably be like the last thing we do this episode. And let's go over and move shield into this thing. What did we get? Better in campaign. It's always better in campaign. And where do we want to go? Go north, I guess. Now, who who are these? A true sewer does not put their own petty desires above the greater good. Okay, why are you so unfriendly? We're both elves. Okay, but the reason our relationship with them is improving because uh, thirteen per turn from our war, you know, quote unquote war with Clan Wars. Um, actually, let's, uh, okay, no, let's go back into diplomacy here. Lorthurn, who are they at war with? They're at war with Tyrannok, and, okay, so that's civil war up there. Do you know who I am? Sudenberg. Armored in faith. Sudenberg, where is Sudenberg? They have one settlement. Oh, they really like us. Why do they like us? Oh, because they, they like our order of um, lore masters. But they're going to get wiped out, right? Protector of the realm. So if we declare war with Sudenberg... What? Oh, we have a non-aggression pact with them? Greetings, stranger. Uh, let's cancel that. Two turns remaining... I don't even remember getting a non-aggression pact with them. Why do we have a non-aggression pact? Okay, now are these guys at war with anybody? No. What brings you to the Phoenix Court? Uh, maybe we can get these guys to join war against Clan Moors, or maybe maybe just the Bloodhall Coven. Because if they are at war with the same people we are, then our influence with them will increase every turn. Right? Let's just. Let's offer them a thousand. I don't. They're not going to take it. I just want to see if there's somebody we can trade with that we can start to improve relations with by being at war with the same faction. That's what I'm God looking for here. Now, if we if we get along with the bowmen of whatever, the deep would protect its sons and daughters. No. Then the last defenders would like us even more, but. Nobody, nobody's biting, right? So, and we also we have quest battles. Win the following battle, war crown. How much does it cost to teleport? Um, so, if we kill these Skaven, reinforcements expected. Then we get what? We get the War Crown. Cooldown minus 30% to spells. Wins of power. Ward save. Yeah, okay. We're going to do this pretty soon. And then the Sword of Teclas. And this is... This is a tough Dark Elf army. Uh, we'll have a hard time with them. But what's the sword look like? 
Okay, the, the sword is not quite as spectacular as the crown. So we're going to do the crown pretty soon. And in fact, I think what we're going to do, because um, we are now at about an hour for this episode, we're going to initiate the battle screen here. And we're going to call this the end of this episode. We'll come back in the next one. We'll fight this battle. Uh, we'll fight Teclis's quest battle for the War Crown of Sorcery. And then maybe we'll head north and try to knock out the Blood Hall Coven. So that sounds like a good plan. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And have a great afternoon.